Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Dr. Neeraj Agarwal and I am Assistant Professor in University Institute of Hotel and Tourism Management, Punjab University, Chandigarh. I am presenting lecture on module titled Wine and Wine Making under the paper titled Food and Beverage Service Operations and Management. After completing this module, the learners would be able to understand the meaning of wine, classification of wine, type of grape varieties, purpose of grapes, manufacturing process of wine, storage of wine, serving temperatures of wine. Now, firstly, discuss about the introduction. The term wine indicates an alcoholic beverage made by the fermentation process from the juice of freshly gathered grapes. However, wine may also be made from variety of fruits which contains water and sugar as nowadays many producers are making wines from fruits like lychee, guava, mango, berries and many more, which is better known as fruit wine. When another fruit is used to produce the wine, the name of the fruit used is included on the label, for example, strawberry wine. The practice of drinking wine for pleasure is centuries old, dating at least as far back as ancient Egypt. Wine mentioned in documents 3000 years old as well as in Bible and the literature of Greeks and Romans. Wine making goes as far back into history as the act of cooking food goes. Ever since the time man started enjoying his food, he has known the art of making wine to go with it. Art of wine making was developed by the ancient Greeks and Romans. They were the ones responsible for spreading it to Italy, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany and Central Europe. There are already a myriad type of wine to discover. But new styles are emerging all the time. This is not only due to improvements in technology, but as a result of new grape varieties and the emergence of new wine making regions with their own unique soils and climate. Wine is about far more than production and consumption. Now we'll discuss about the factors affecting the quality of wine. In this, the first one is the terroir. There are many factors that determine the quality of wine. The same grape grown in the same area can make two different wines. Yet, different grapes grown apart can produce wines that are very similar. A term commonly used to describe these factors is terroir. The term terroir means all natural and climatic elements linked to a particular vineyard. The terroir is the primary influence on the character of the wine. Though the grape variety and the method used by the wine producer remain important factors, terroir does not simply refer to the soil and what lies beneath the wines that is granite, limestone, etc. but also includes other local factors such as the slope, hillsides or plain, altitude, exposure, environment and climate. The terroir is the combination of all these factors and it gives each wine producing site its unique identity. Among many factors responsible for quality of wine, some of very important ones are soil. The best terroirs are those of poor soil on well-drained hillsides where excess water is avoided and the vines enjoy good exposure to sunlight in order for their fruits to ripen effectively. The best wines are often grain grown in limestone, gravelly, sandy or stony soil and on a hillside rather than on a plain. Climate for a good harvest climate needs a good balance of moisture and heat. Grape variety size, skin, and the sugar content, method of cultivation, 
viticulture fermentation process the process of vinification that is how the wine is being made aging and manufacturing process bottling and storage and other factors which loosely term the luck of the year the grape many varieties of grapes are used to produce wine they are all based on the grafting of the skins of european varieties of this species vitis vinifera onto american root stocks vitis rupestris vitis riparia and vitis burland berry grafting began in the 19th century because the louse phylloxera attacked the european root stocks as the american root stocks are resistant to phylloxera european growers found the solution by grafting vitis vinifera onto the roots of wild american wines since then wine stocks have been composed of a graft the part of the plant that grows above the ground attached to a root stock the former is always a vitis vinifera while the root stock is nearly always from the another species it is also important to know that table grapes consumed at homes are different from wine grapes wine grapes and different uh, table grapes brix level is 24 to 26 and in the side they have brix level 17 to 19 grapes are lean and thin grapes are fat and sassy grapes are smaller and riddled with seed grapes are larger seedless with thicker pulp and thinner skins note brix is the scale to measure the percentage of sugar in a liquid now we discuss about the composition of grape the character of a wine its aroma taste and structure is shaped by the grapes from which it is made the grape variety used are usually given on the label of the bottle of new world wine but not always on old one wine wines the grape is made up of stalk skin pips and pulp smaller the fruit the more concentrated the flavor therefore all classic grape varieties have small berries grapes are classified as red grapes and white grapes the purpose of the falling parts of grape is as follows skin the outer skin has a whitish or cloudy coat known as bloom which contains a wild yeast which contribute to the fermentation process skin also contains a pigment named anthocyanin which imparts color to the wine skin of the black grapes provides the color and tannin in red wine skin also adds character to the wine stem or stalk the stalks are usually removed before the grapes are crushed or pressed previously the stalks were left on the grapes for red wines and this increased the tannin content of the wine the characteristics of the wine will vary according to the variety of grape used and the vinification process third pips these are not crushed in the vinification as they contain tannin acids oils and water which can spoil the wine pulp the pulp produces the grape juice known as must in france and mosto in italy and spain the juice provides the water content and the fruit flavor which comes from the sugar and acids sugar content dictates the alcoholic level and acidity or sweetness in the wine the pulp supplies the sugar required for the fermentation process now we discuss about grape varieties grapes are classified as red grape and white grape most of the white wines are produced from white grape that can range in color from green to amber yellow on the other hand red and rosé wines are made from black grapes white wines can also be made from black grapes after removing the skin however red wines cannot be made from white grapes some of the principal grape varieties are chardonnay famous grape from alsace region in france produces greatest dry wines in the world Cabernet Sauvignon dark red in color it has aroma of black currant when young 
wine made from this variety becomes brick red with cedar wood aroma as it develops. High on tannin and often blended with many varieties. Colombard produces thin acidic wine ideal for distillation of cognac and armenac. Merlot produces supple and fruity wines with aroma of blackcurrant and plums. Chenin Blanc has good acidity level, thin skin and high sugar content, good for making sparkling wine. Greenage, sweet grapes, makes strong wines with character and not much color. Fole Blanche, traditionally used for making Armenic. Gamay, wines made are light, rich in primary aromas and has the flavor of ripe red fruit, has little tannin and is often acidic. Sauvignon Blanc produces dry and aromatic white wines. Cabernet Franc produces wines with fresh fruity aromas with a flavor of ripe red or black fruits. Gyomach Craners makes aromatic and spicy wine. It is a grape from Alsace. Petit Vardho produces rich and tannic wines that improves with age. Müller Thurgau from Germany makes aromatic wines low in acidity. Pinot Noir, fairly delicate grape also used to make champagne, makes scented, flavorful and full-bodied wines. Pinot Blanc, white variant of Vinot Pinot Noir, low in substance and aroma. Pinot Moiner produces supply, supple fruity red wines also used in making champagne. Riesling, a classic German variety, produces wines with a good balance of acidity and sweetness. Ginfendel, an American multi-purpose grape variety, rich in sugar and fruity aromas. Allegoth, thin-skinned grape, make wines of moderate alcoholic content which is dry and crisp. Syrah, in Australia known as Shiraz, made papri structured wines with violent aromas. Trebbiano, major grape variety of Italy, produces fresh light white wines often blended with one or more other varieties. Nebbiolo, also known as Spana in from Italy produces world famous Barolo and Barbesco wines. Semillon produces good white wines, sometimes blended with Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Vies from Italy used as a blend in producing Chianti wines. Now I will discuss classification of wine. Generally, wines are simply classified into following categories natural or still wines these are further classified into red being fermented with the grape skin from which the wine gets its color white usually produced from white grapes and the grape juice is fermented away from the skins rosé the color is controlled by regulating the duration the grape juice is kept in contact with the skin. Sparkling wine. Sparkling wines are those wines which get sparkle or effervescences from carbon dioxide. Cava from Spain, Prosecco and Astis Pamet from Italy to name a few sparkling wines. The term champagne is reserved for the sparkling wines made in Champagne region of France. Whereas other countries producing similar wines is known as sparkling wines. Fortified wines. A fortified wine is a wine strengthened with the addition of grape spirit brandy. The spirit also preserves the wine for longer periods after the bottle is opened. Fortified wines include Sherry, Porth, Madra, Marsala and Malaga. Aromatized wines. These are the wines which are fortified and flavored with botanicals 
such as herbs, fruit peels, fruit extracts, kunin. Examples are Vermouth, Dubonnet, Lilith and which are being fortified with herbs, fruit peels and with brandy. However, in a broader term, wines, class, wines can be classified as follows on the basis of characteristic and nature. Sparkling wines. Sparkling wines are those wines which gets sparkle or effervescence from carbon dioxide. Cava from Spain, Prosecco and Asti's Pomade from Italy to name a few sparkling wines. The term Champagne is reserved for the sparkling wines made in the Champagne region of France whereas other countries producing similar wine is known as sparkling wines. Aromatized wines. Aromatized wines are those wines which are fortified and aromatized by the botanical such as herbs, barks, roots and many more. Vermouth, Dubonnet and Lilith are famous aromatized wines. Fortified wines. A fortified wine is a wine strengthened with the addition of grape spirit brandy. The spirit also preserves the wine for longer periods after the bottle is opened. Fortified wines include Sherry, Poth, Madra, Marsala and Malaga. Taste They are being classified on the basis of taste. Sweet wine has a high sugar content. The sugar may remain in the wine after the fermentation has finished. Dry wines These wines are low in sugar. This is usually arrived at by allowing the fermentation to use up the grape sugar in the fermentation and it can be classified on the basis of color. White wine usually produced from white grapes and the grape juice is fermented away from the skin. White wines can also be made from red grapes after removing the grape skin. Red wines fermented with the grape skins from which the wine gets its color. Blush wine, an American invention, blush wine is a pale pink blue wine made from red grapes. The skins are only in contact with the must for an hour or two during fermentation. Rosé wines, they are made from the black grapes. Must is left with the skin for about one day or till the desired pinkish color is achieved. Then the must is removed to continue fermenting at a low temperature elsewhere. Rosé wines can also be made by mixing red and white wine to the desired color in many new world wine producing countries. Ear Vintage wines The term vintage in wine refers to harvest. It means the year of the production which sometimes features on a collar around the neck of bottle is optional for both AOC wines and Winza Pace wines but almost all producers mentions it. If the vintage is specified at least 85% of the wine whatever is the category must come from the year indicated. Non-vintage wines these are the blended wines. Now. It can be classified on the basis of body. Light bodied wines. Light bodied wines is usually below 13% alcohol by volume. Medium bodied wines. These are wines which are round, fairly fat with good body texture and flavorsome. Full bodied wines. Wines which are high in alcoholic content that is 30% alcohol by volume upwards as classed as full-bodied wines. Now, unspecified nomenclature. Varietal wines are those wines which carries variety label. That is, the label tells you the variety of the grapes from which the wines are made. Common white varietal wines includes Chardonnay, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc and Gumach Kramer, whereas Cabernet Sauvignon Pinot Noir and Shiraz are red varietal wines. Often, two or more varieties are blended, for instance, Tremor, Riesling or Cabernet Shiraz. 
generic wines. These are the wines which are names after the long established European area. Many North American and Australian wines are labeled as Clarets, Burgundy, Chablis, Chardonnay, Graves, Hog and even Champagne. A generic wine should possess the distinctive color, flavor and aroma of its own. Organic wine. These are the wines produced by organic farming method. Organic farming refuses to use any conventional chemicals relying instead on natural treatments or the prevention of diseases through better maintenance of the vineyard. Organic farming concentrates on farming techniques forbidding any synthetic chemicals, fungicides, pesticides or fertilizers. Organic viticulture is not looking to feed the plant directly but to ensure soil fertile fertility by maintaining biological activity within it. Biodynamic wine regarded as a branch of organic farming, biodynamic goes much further than simply excluding the use of artificial chemicals. It uses basic products such as cow dung. Now we discuss about the vinification or wine making. Wine is made through the natural process of fermentation. In this process, sugar is converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide by yeast that is present on the skin of the grape called bloom. Under normal condition, the yeast will go on working until all sugar in the grape is converted into alcohol or until the alcoholic percentage is about 14 to 16 percent of the volume. Left to nature, almost all the wines would be dry, but it is possible to stop fermentation before all the sugar is used up, either by adding alcohol to raise the level up to 15 percent or by adding sulfur. Both of these kills the yeast. Another alternative is to filter the wine. These methods are applied to manufacture, manufacture sweet wines. There are five basic components or steps of wine making. The first one is harvesting. Knowing when to pick the grape is very important and critical thing for winemaker. The vintage is made by the weather. Therefore, the season when to pick depends on the weather. White wines generally need High acidity therefore should be picked early with a whisk black grapes which is generally picked later when it has achieved a balance in color and sugar content. Before the harvest, winemakers spend a lot of time in the vineyard sampling the grapes, checking sugar content with the refractometer. Harvesting can be done manually as well as mechanically. Manual harvest ensures quality of grapes. However, it's a time consuming and labor intensive process. On the other hand, mechanical harvest is a fairly quick and inexpensive process. However, desired quality of grapes might not be achieved. The second step is crushing or destemming. Crushing is done to break the berries without crushing the seeds. De-stemming separates the berries from the stem. After this, the grapes are immediately transferred to the wine press by pumping. Next, pressing. During pressing, all the juice is extracted from the grapes. It results in a clear juice without crushing the seeds. If they were crushed, the wines might taste grassy. This process must be done immediately to avoid oxidation. Resulting grape juice is known as must. The French Vaseline press, Wilmus or Punematic press or continuous hydraulic and Archimed presses are used for pressing the wines. Falling is to keep in mind while pressing is done. In white wines, the grapes are pressed immediately after harvest and only the juice goes for fermentation. Sufficient yeast are run off with the juice for fermentation to take place. In red wine, the fermentation takes place with the skins still present in the must. 
This practice is known as cubation. Skins are removed when sufficient color and tannin have been extracted. In rosé wines, skin is kept in contact with juice for a very short time and skin is immediately removed as soon as the desired pinkish color is achieved. Note, unfermented musk contains perhaps 24% sugar content together with malic acid, tartaric acid, cream of tartar, protein, tannin, coloring matter and glycerol. The alcohol formed in the production of wine is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. The alcohol percentage will depend on the sugar content of the must and variety of yeast whereas maceration means contact between the juice known as must and the solids including the skins or film. For red wines, the distinctive feature of making red wine is in its maceration. The must containing juicy mass of crushed grapes is transferred into a fermentation vats that can be a thermoregulated stainless steel tanks or wooden vats. The during of fermentation involving maceration and fermentation can range from a few days to three weeks depending on the style of wine. During this stage, the coloring matter, tannins and aromatics compounds contained in the solid parts of the grapes that is in skin and pulp are dissolved in the juice giving the wine its color and character. For white wine and rosé wines, clarifying the must and addition of sulfur, the must after the pressing is cloudy. It contains solids or sedimentary materials that can make wine taste bad, so it should be removed. To do this, the juice may be removed to the centrifugal extractor which is quick and efficient. The other method is stabilization by cold at almost 32 degree Fahrenheit or 0 degree centigrade is better as the juice is prevented from starting fermentation while the sediments naturally falls to the bottom of the tank. During this stage, the sulfur dioxide is added the must to prevent oxidation and to neutralize the development of any microorganism. Excessive use of sulfur dioxide can mask all the wine's flavors. Another useful preservative is potassium sorbate. Then we go for fermentation. Fermentation is the process where yeast consumes the sugar available in grape juice and produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. Yeast is a unicellular microorganism which reacts on sugar when receives favorable temperature and produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. Apart from yeast, naturally present in outer skin of the grapes also known as bloom. Cultured yeast is also used in wine making. Cultured yeast refers to the yeast made in laboratory. Yeast name Saccharomyces allosodium and Saccharomyces epiculatas are generally used for wine making. During fermentation process, heat also generates, so the temperature has to be carefully controlled. Cultured yeast are also added for fermentation. Fermentation is different for red and white wines. Red wines are fermented with their skins and seeds as these not only pass color but also tannin and additional ingredients that provide flavor whereas white wine the grapes are first pressed to extract the juice which is then fermented on its own in vats or barrels. Fermentation for white wines. White wines are fermented slowly for one to four weeks. Fermentation can be stimulated by an injection of cultured yeast or by adding fermenting juice from another vat. The temperature required for yeast in white wine making process is 15 degree centigrade to 20 degree centigrade to impart delicacy and fragrance. The temperature determines the extent of fermentation and hence the style of wine desired. The lower the temperature, the more time 
the wine will take to ferment resulting in higher quality wines. The higher the temperature, the quicker the fermentation but also often lower quality wines. Fermentation vats can be made of stainless steel tanks or wooden vats. Also note that while making white wines, winemakers prevent the malolactic fermentation. Fermentation for red wines, the duration of fermentation involving maceration and fermentation can range from a few days to three weeks depending on the style of wine which take place in a wooden vats or thermoregulated stainless steel. Red wines are fermented more quickly and at a higher temperature between 25 degrees centigrade to 30 degrees centigrade which help to extract color and body for the wine. When the winemaker considers the optimal maceration time complete, whether alcoholic fermentation is complete or not, the wine is run off. A valve is opened at the bottom of the tank to flush out the liquid permanently separating it from solids. The juice that is run off is of finest and high quality and is known as free run wine or win the guet. Afterwards, the grape skin and leaves are pressed to extract any remaining juices known as press wine or win the press. They are matured separately, classically in oak casks where they undergo a malolactic fermentation. During a malolactic fermentation, in red wine, the malic acid is converted into lactic acid providing a texture and buttery flavor to the wines and does not affect the alcohol content of wine. A bacterial named Onychos oini is responsible for malolactic fermentation and not the yeast. And the next step is maturation when the must has been transformed into wine by fermentation maturation begins and comes to an end at the point of bottling. Maturation refines and develops the qualities of wine. Maturation is done to clarify the wines and to allow the wines to develop and acquire flavors. Maturation can be done in large scale in tanks but majority of the winemakers use oak barrels for aging. After the wine has been made, it still has made many tiny particles of grape material, yeast and bacteria suspended in the liquid known as lees. These lees can result in second fermentation on contact with residual sugars are generally removed. For clarifying, the wine, racking, finning and filtering are the most common methods used. Some white wines are matured solely on the lees which means they are not ragged or filtered before bottling. This gives a greater depth of flavor to the white wines and enhance freshness and liveliness. Racking, it is the most common method complemented by filtration before filtering. Racking means the separating the wines from the lees by carefully pouring it from one container to another. Racking eliminates the lees that had settled naturally at the bottom of the tank or barrel and optionally oxygen rates and softness the wine. It also releases residual carbon dioxide produced during fermentation. When the wine must be stored in the tanks or barrels for a long time, racking is done two to four times per year. But this frequency may greatly increase when the maturation period is short or after finning. Finning, this method is often used before bottling whether or not racking has already taken place. The finning agent, when comes in contact with the wine, forms sediments by binding with any microscopic impurities and settle downs and later on removed by racking. The best agent for red wines is beaten egg white, six eggs per barrel, while for white wines, casin is the best. After finning, Red tannin wines lose some of the roughness caused by tannins and gain softness and fineness. Then we go for a filtering. This sometimes 
complements the racking carried out during maturation, but more often takes place before bottling. The plates or membrane filters used here have smaller or larger pores. When they are tiny pores, the wines not only has the lees removed, but is also sterilized because bacteria too are unable to pass through the very tiny holes. Then we go for a bottling. Wines are also sometimes blended before bottling, which helps in harmonious combination of wines so as to offer different characteristics. Dark color bottles are used so that sunlight does not affect the wine. Wine producers also use bottles of various shapes and sizes to identify different type of wines. The three most common shapes of wine bottles are Baudu, Burgundy and Flute. Sparkling wine. Sparkling wines are those wines which contains carbon dioxide. There are four methods to add sparkle to the wine. The Champagne method, method QV, close or charmant method, transfer method and carbonation method. Now we discuss about alcohol free wines. These wines contains a maximum of 0.05% alcohol by volume. De-alcoholized wines contains a maximum of 0.5% alcohol by volume. Low alcohol wines contains a maximum of 1 to 2% alcohol by volume. Reduced alcohol wines contains a maximum of 5.5% alcohol by volume. These wines are made in normal method and later on the alcohol is removed by distillation process or reverse osmosis method. Aerating the wines. Red wines along with some white wines need aeration when starting to mature. This is provided either by the racking by slow diffusion of oxygen through the seams of the barrel, but the amount of oxygen should remain minimal. Except in rare cases such as wines fortified with alcohol, the producers always avoids direct and prolonged contact between wine and air. Oxygen promotes the growth of bacteria such as acetobacter which can turn the alcohol into vinegar. It also alters the color and taste of wine to avoid this sulfur is added. Role of barrel in aging. Maturation in oak barrel is common for wines that need to be aged for a long period. The word barrel is a generic term for all wooden containers used to house wine. Oak of the Limousin forest of France is considered best for aging of wines. However, oak supplies also comes from Poland, Slovenia and Russia. Oak is porous, light and easy to handle. New wooden barrel provides the wine with the most aroma and flavor. When used for the first time, tannins and other substances are transferred to the wine and tartar crystals even a portion of wines are deposited in the wood. The thicker the tartaric layers, the less effect the wood will have. Although some barrels are made of chestnut, oak is universally appreciated for its physical properties and its flavor contribution. Oak provides various flavor to the wines the most significant being vanilla. In addition to the notes of vanilla, various aromas such as pepper, coconut, smoke is also imparted by the oak in the wine. The oak also provides the wine with tannin apart from those transmitted by the skin and stalk of the grapes. It is also possible to obtain the oak-like flavors with oak chips placed into stainless steel tanks. Most of the New World wines are like Chile and New Zealand are using this technique. Wine cork. To seal a wine bottle, cork is used. The cork is made up of bark of oak tree, which grows only in the western Mediterranean and Portugal. Cork has a unique physical properties and it sells from microscopic suckers that grips the bottleneck. It is 
insert and impervious to the liquids and neither react with wine and nor rot. Only wibbles and fungi are likely to affect it, but these can be avoided. Occasionally, some bottles will have a cogged or tainted aroma and flavor. Nowadays, synthetic corks made from plastic foams and screw caps are also being used by many wine producers. Now, we discuss the advantages of screw cap. Maintains the freshness of the wine, easy to open as compared to cork. Wines can be stored vertically as well. No cases of withered cork. Most of the people do not have wine opener at their home. Screw cap is made of aluminium, which is totally recyclable. The liner known as saran film is totally non-reactive to the wine. Tannin. Tannin is a mouth drying chemical that comes from the grape skin and from the oak barrel in which wine is aged or extremely added tannin powder. Tannin is only found in red grape varieties and are extracted from the skins during maceration or they may arise during storage in barrels. Their quality and quantity is defined by various factors such as grape variety, maturity of the grapes and duration of maceration. Tannins are responsible for the structure of wine and play an essential role in aging. Tannins are noticeable as a sensation of astringency which gives a chewingness to the wine. Common flavors found in wine. In general, dry white wines should have a pleasantly citrus, lemon, grapefruit, and a grassy or green fruit aroma. Fuller white wines might have a vanilla or butter aroma. The lighter reds typically have aromas of red fruits and the heavier reds black fruits. Aged, red will have aromas of earth, smoke, oak and even spice smell. Young wines will have lively aromas. Aged wines will have more ripe and complex aroma. A good red wine balances the key elements of acidity, alcohol, fruit and tannin. Cheaper wines will lack the complexity of more expensive red wines, whereas a good white wine balances the fruit, sugar, acidity and alcohol. Common aromas found in the wines are as below. Fruits, smoke, spice, herbs, vanilla, flowers, wood, vegetables. Now, we are going to discuss points to be considered while making wine. During fermentation process, sulfur dioxide is added to the must to kill any harmful wild yeast and any bacterial contamination. Unfermented must contains approximately 24% grape sugar together with various acids, cream of tartar, protein, tannin and minerals. If the must does not contain enough natural sugar, to produce the required amount of alcohol, then a small amount of sugar is added and known as chaplization. It is subject to local regulations. Every gram of sugar in the must is converted to about half a gram of ethyl alcohol. Red wine requires a lot of attention. Fermentation stops when all the sugar is converted to alcohol or when all the yeast are killed. Now, I will discuss the storage of wines. The wines should be stored, kept lying horizontally for the cork to remain moist and make sure that wine should not expose to light as light damages wines, especially white wines and sparkling wines. An ideal place to store wine is cellar. It is situated underground to avoid any vibrations. The cellar should have good ventilation, but no drafts, dark, clean, no odor, quiet, damp, gravel floor with a stone or a brick wall. The temperature of cellar should be cool 
and constant between 8 degree centigrade to 18 degree centigrade and humidity should be 75% to 80% as too much humidity can cause wine labels to peel off and lack of humidity will result in the dryness of cork. Wine in the glass is poured as in red one third, white one by two and sparkling wine three by four. Now we'll discuss the serving temperatures of table wines. Temperature has a big impact on the taste of wine. Each style of wine has optimum serving temperature at which it releases its aroma and flavors to best effect. Following is the serving temperatures of various wines. Type of wines and their serving temperatures are Light crisp white wines served to 4 to 6 degrees centigrade. Juicy aromatic white wines served at 6 to 8 degrees centigrade. Full opulence white wines 10 to 12 degrees centigrade. Rose wines 4 to 6 degrees centigrade. Fruity lively red wines 12 to 14 degrees centigrade. Ripe smooth red wines 16 to 18 degrees centigrade. Rich dense red wines 18 to 20 degrees centigrade. Sparkling wines from 6 to 8 degrees centigrade, sweet and fortified 6 to 8 degrees centigrade. And then always remember that over chilling the white wines not only nubs the taste buds but also can change the taste characteristics. Now we we'll discuss about wine opener. Various wine openers are used to open the wine, but the most popular wine opener is Waiter's Friend. Wine faults, poor storage conditions or vinification process results in unpleasant characteristics and bad color in a wine known as wine faults or wine defects. Oxidation, it results in deterioration of the bouquet is caused by the prolonged contact with air and insufficient dosage of sulfur dioxide during aging. Reduction. During production of wine and aging, when wine does not get enough exposure to oxygen, the reduced wine start giving a foul smell of silver or rotten eggs. Smell of sulfur, it is caused by the excessive usage of sulfur during winemaking which gives a smell of sulfur. This lingers mostly in white wines which are very sensitive to oxidation and protected by more sulfur dioxide. Mercaption, it is also a sulfur related fault in which fermentation yeast reacts with sulfur in the lees produces an unpleasant smell of rotten eggs, onion or burnt rubber. Acetification, also known as acetic spoilage is accused by bacterium and produces an acetic wine which gives a taste of vinegar. Crystals of tartar generally appears in bottom of white wine, spoiling the appearance, however, perfect to drink after decanting the wine. Cock wines, these are wines affected by a diseased cock caused through bacterial action or excessive bottle age. The wine will have rancid, fungal smell and taste. The term should not be confused with cork residue, little harmless bits of cork which may splinter into the wine on opening a bottle. Now we discuss about decanting a wine. Decanting is a delicate operation requiring a degree of dexterity to achieve three objectives. To separate anti sediments from the wines, to aerate the wines and to modify the temperature of wine. Cocky wines are decanted to remove the withered particles of corks from the wine. However, wines can also be decanted to remove the sediments which has formed in the wine and to allow the wine to breathe. Utmost care to be taken off the corky wines or wines which has sediments so that sediments does not get mixed up in wine causing it to become cloudy. If this happens, then the wine should not be decanted but rather left opened to allow the sediments to settle. For decanting a wine, a clean decanters along with 
decantic funnel or muslin cloth or a candle is required. The decanting funnel, if used, is placed on the decanter and a piece of muslin cloth is placed in the funnel if required. Light the candle beside the decanter. Now held the boat bottle firmly with one hand and the wine is poured steadily into the top of the funnel or decanter with the shoulder of the bottle held over the candle flame. If the bottle is held too close to the flame, soot may form on the underneath of the bottle, which will prevent the person decanting from seeing the sediments moving up the bottle to the neck. The pouring should be continued until the sediments reaches shoulder of the bottle. At this point, pouring must stop before any of the sediment passes into the decanter. Now, I will summarize this topic that wine making is an important activity in producing a wines. There are major various steps which has been included during a wine making and the important ingredients which help in wine making are the grapes and the fermentation method has been used for this purpose. Thanking you and have a nice day.